I'm not gonna lie. I am a sucker for consistency. I love when things just work out as they should, when they should. In my own life, I've found that when things are consistent, life tends to get a little bit easier. One of the daily patterns that I find brings me a lot of joy is driving this truck. See, this 4Runner is consistent as it gets, and driving every day, plugging to my phone, and listening to tunes is something that I absolutely love. Unfortunately, there's a problem with that. For the past few months, I've had this head unit that's a total bump. It honestly just shines this white light and I cannot fix it. So I was challenged to find a new head unit that works within my budget, but can also let me listen to tunes again and may provide me with some new features. That's when I actually stumbled upon a Toto, this company that makes affordable Android head units, and I was like, you know what, let's give it a go. Who knows what we're gonna find? And so they sent me a brand new Toto S8 MS, an amplifier and a rear view camera, guys. And I am stoked to say that we're gonna install it today and take a look at it. So I hope you join me. Thanks for watching. Let's go. All right, everybody, we got everything on the table here. We got a rear view camera. Super excited to install this. This is a 360 view rear view camera. We're gonna do an installation video and overview on this, probably separate. I'll include a little bit just so if you have purchased this, you know how to install it. Um, next up, we got the amp. We have the CAAE CO2 amp. This is a brand new amp that Atoto makes. I just personally wanted to amplify my music a little bit more. I know for the Forerunner, especially the Limited, we have a JBL sound system, and so I wanted to make sure that this is gonna pack the punch. Even though this does have a built-in amplifier, I wanted to get a little boost just to make sure I'm getting all that noise out of that sucker. So we're gonna be installing the amp as well, which is gonna fit directly behind the unit, which is really nice. And then we got the bread and butter of this install video. The Atoto S8MS. Brand new, right off the press, right off the line. Um, this is kind of the culmination of all their best systems in a sense. Getting a lot of features with this. Um, saving costs on some of the unnecessary features like hand gestures. I don't really want to control my music like this. That doesn't sound fun to me. And so we're not going to worry about that too much, but we do have a lot of features with this thing. We have wireless and wired CarPlay, Bluetooth, um, we have GPS navigation, we also have actually internet access through Wi-Fi, which is really cool. Tons of apps, we're going to get into that. And so right away we've got some screen protectors, a whole bunch of wiring here. We're going to go through what everything is and figure that out. Um, as we keep going though, we got more wiring. Looks like some audio video stuff. We have some backing plates. Um, keep in mind, your head unit is gonna require um, a certain type of mounting plate. And so it's a double, a double din head unit. And so you also need a mounting plate and you're gonna need a harness. Personally, I use crutchfield.ca for my harnesses. Um, just way easier, they send it to you and then you just connect it to the supplied harness. With that being said, um, if you have a 4th Gen 4Runner, I'm going to link what I use in the description below so you can see exactly what I use to install this. Keep moving here. Bunch more wires. And then we got the bread and butter. We got the head unit itself. And so this head unit, as you can see, quite beautiful. Let's get some sun on that thing. Oh, I got the one without the actual buttons itself. So these are all virtual touchscreen buttons. Um, you can get the same model with buttons on its own. but very slim, very powerful. I'm excited to see what this thing does in the Forerunner. And so let's unbox the amplifier quick and just show you guys how it's gonna be mounted and then we'll get to the install. All right, now moving on to the amplifier, we have our wiring, of course, our connectors, whole bunch of it. Keep in mind, some of these will be unused um, just because some of them are vehicle specific and you might not even use all of them. Mounting hardware. And then we have the actual app itself. Fairly straightforward. You can see on here we have our, get that there, it's just in plastic. We have our output, output, input, all in a nice little um, similar area so we can tuck those wires really nicely. I'm gonna try to fit this behind my head unit. We'll see if we can get it to fit. If not, we will be placing it somewhere else, but Anyways, guys, that's what we're starting with. And so let's go take the old hand unit out and get started. All right, and so now we are removing everything. We're inside the truck and you got a 10 mil right here. You're gonna undo that one. You can then pull this loose. Just pry her off nice and gentle. 
like that. And then there's gonna be a little one behind that as well. That is a 10 mil, as you can kind of see. There we go, that comes off. And we got her off. So you guys can see, and so now that that's off, this, that bolt that we just took off is gonna be holding this, and so we're gonna to have to take off, grabbing the camera here. A little bit of the center console, I'll show you where everything is. Don't get too overwhelmed. We're gonna put it back together the exact same way. All right, guys, next step, we're just gonna pop this piece up, and so you can take it off from here. And we just want that to come loose. Pop that up to get that out of the way. And once we got this, there's gonna be just a few little plugs here. We're gonna undo those plugs so we can get this piece out of the way, which will give us access to the next piece in the puzzle. All right, everybody, once you've done that, you're gonna come over here and you are gonna pry up either in here or up here, and you're gonna pry this piece up. It's gonna have a bunch of connectors here. Don't be afraid. We're just gonna unhook them all, be gentle. Once we do that, we're gonna to toss it over there and then work on taking the silver thing out. All right, now that you got that out, all you need to do Toss that to the side. All right, continuing forward here, we got two more, one 10 mil there, one 10 mil there. Take that out, pull this down, just below right in here where my finger is gonna be another 10 mil. We're gonna remove those three and then we're gonna meet back here. All right, then we're gonna get to this part. All you need to do here is put your finger under here, pull pretty hard and it's gonna come loose. There's these red tabs in the back, that's what's holding it in, and a plug. And that plug is gonna look just like this, this white plug here. We're just gonna unplug that and then if you look here, we have some bolts. Two bolts, 10 mil is gonna take that out, which is gonna release this trim piece. You got your buttons there, you can remove those if you want. We're just gonna pull that trim back. All right, and so once you get to this point, we can go ahead and unhook everything, with the transfer case switch, window switch, hazards, and you can just pull her out and put her to the side. I still have that one there, that cord there, because I just have a USB um, to plug my phone in to charge it, but I'll remove that from the back of the head unit, and then we're good. All right, and once you got that off, you're gonna have two bolts. One down there, one over there. Take those off and you're gonna be able to get to your head unit bolts uh, and we should be good. All right, once you do that, since I have an aftermarket head unit, I have all this wires. If you don't have this, you just need to unplug everything. Not too hard. Since I do, I'm just gonna unplug all this stuff, unplug the harness, bring it over to the bench, and then we'll talk some more. This looks overwhelming, guys. It's really not that bad. Deep breaths. All right, guys, I got everything on the bench here. So I got my old head unit out. Um, as you can see, pretty bulky. We're going to remove this from um, the mounting bracket, and then we'll put the new Atoto one in there. Then I have my harness here. The tricky thing with this is I had to connect a lot of these on my own just because I had to connect the aftermarket harness from my Pioneer to this. And so I'm going to undo a bunch of these and connect the new Atoto connections. Guys, I'm going to be honest. Even though I'm making a tutorial, I still get overwhelmed by this stuff. And so what I'm probably going to do here is I'm going to film backwards. I'm going to go ahead and do a bunch of steps and then show you what I did rather than just saying what I'm going to do because that's going to change as I go. The simplest piece that I'm going to do right now, though, is I'm going to take my old head unit out and put the new Atoto one in with the mounting brackets and secure the amp right away. And then we're going to figure out what wires are going to be needed to be used and how to connect them to our harness. And so I'm gonna go ahead and do that, guys. And we're gonna work backwards. We got this together, let's do it. All right, everybody, so here we are. We got everything out. I have my old head unit out. I put the new Atoto one in here. This DIN plate is not the right size, but I managed to make it fit in the meantime. And so what we're gonna do now is take our 16 pin harness from the Atoto, and we're gonna connect it to our aftermarket harness. I cut all my old ends off. All we have to do now, guys, you have all these colors. Very simple. For example, steering wheel control, steering wheel control. Those are going to go together. And then we have a green wire. Okay, I'm going to go in my Toto harness here. I'm going to find the green wire. Oh my goodness, those are both labeled the same. They're going to go together. So we're going to solder those together and or you can crimp them together. However you want to do it, we're going to put them together, connect these two harnesses. And then once we get to there, we are gonna go and put this in the vehicle, make sure everything works, and then we're gonna work on putting the amplifier in line with everything to make sure that works as well. So all I'm gonna do now is just trim some of these ends off and then connect them to the harness. I'll show you once we get there. 
All right, so after um, a pretty easy time, it wasn't actually terribly too hard, uh, we have this finished. So we have the Atoto unit in here. We have all our inputs. Keep in mind when you're installing, you're going to have 4G. You're going to have some inputs that are going to be installed in the truck, such as your navigation, your GPS ones. We have our FM. Those are already in the truck, so when we put this in, we're going to get that there. And then you can kind of see here, we have one slot right here. This is for our 16-pin connector, um, which is... Da -da -da, let me find that right here. And so as you can see, all I did, I connected all these, soldered them together, taped them, sealed them. And then we have our 16 connector going from this harness, plug it in, and we're good to go. However, we're going to be installing this amp from Matoto as well. Just because we want a little bit more power, we might be upgrading the system in, a few, in the future. So the cool thing with this is, all you need to do for these is you can actually just piggyback it. So we're going to put this one in here just like that. And then we have the included 20 to 16. So the 20 is going to go up here just like that. Clicks. 16 is going to piggyback right into here. Done. And then we just have a little one in here as well. And if everything's right in my life, it'll go in, which it is. So as easy as that. Now we have the amp actually piggyback. So what we're going to have to do now is just mount this in here with the supplied hardware. I'll show you guys what that looks like in a minute. And just clean up all this, making sure we have all our um, loose connections ready to be installed in the truck. But that's how easy it is to piggyback this amp on this head unit. All right, guys, we managed to get the amp in here. As you can see, it's tucked in the bracket here. We have everything hooked up. Make sure you're doing all your hookups. That means your GPS. 4G, um, if you have a mic input, you want to make sure you have that. I wire mine down there through here under just the ignition. Um, yeah, get everything in there and make sure to test before you wire it all up and put everything back. So far, so good for us. One cool thing that I do want to show you guys. Uh, do I have my keys on me? I don't think I have my keys on me. But, uh, oh, here they are. So when we start it up, it's going to load up as it does. Just gonna wait for it to connect. We've got CarPlay all set up. This is a really cool unit here. I'll show you what the startup sequence looks like. Uh, and give me one second, verification approved. We like to see that. We already got CarPlay on here. We got some music. We got some maps. Hopefully you can't see where I live. I don't want you to see that. Um, but the cool thing is I got this hooked up to my switch panel. And right now we just have the rear view camera. I'll come show you how we did it. And so instead of running the uh, the rear view camera to reverse lights for the ground and the power, I actually wired them directly into my switch panel here. And so what this is going to allow us to do is when we hit that switch on the switch panel, we actually get to see out of the reverse camera anytime we want. Pretty fun. I'm going to cover the wiring and everything in a separate video. I just don't want to put it all in one because there's so much to cover here. So I'm just going to hide these <laughs> under my uh, kick panel for now. And then we'll get to that in a video soon. But I'm just going to bundle this up together and then we'll take a look. Alright guys, so we got the Atoto MS, or S8 MS should I say, back in the truck here. Um, to put it back together, all you're doing is basically everything we did to take it apart, but in reverse. Uh, making sure you have everything plugged in. You should have no problems at all. One thing I will say, if you're putting a backup camera in, um, if you're doing the mic output, the external mic for um, just talking on the phone and stuff, make sure you have that plugged in and routed before you hook everything up. Going to come in handy. But I want to tell you guys a little bit about uh, this head unit and the amplifier. And I'm going to split that into to two kind of ways here. Let's talk about the quality first, functionality second. And then third, I'm just going to give you a brief overview of what I think are the pros and cons. All right, let's begin. First things first, quality. We want it to turn on. Let's check how long it takes. Boom, that was quick. Not gonna lie, quicker than the other head units I've had. With that being said, I've also had this in my truck for a week. I have everything connected um, and I've got to play around with the audio quality. Guys, I will say the audio quality out of the box is pretty fantastic. I of course have the aftermarket amplifier put in behind this thing. But I would honestly say if you're running a stock system, you do not need an amplifier. This is a built-in amplifier and it is more than loud enough, clear enough. It has the punch levels, connects to all the speakers very well, uses my car audio system to the best of its ability. I can tell you that for sure. 
But if you have an aftermarket sub, if you have a, a hungry aftermarket system that needs that power, this piggyback amp on the back is fantastic. It's advertised to produce three times the power of your stock amplifier, and I can guarantee you it does that, and it's clean, and it gives you those punch levels, but probably not meant for a stock system. So I would, stay, I would say if you're upgrading your system speaker-wise, subwoofer-wise, definitely look into it if you're getting in a Toto head unit. For the price, guys, it's a no-brainer. But let's talk quality. Screen quality, we have a very fast swiping screen. I've been really impressed with the FPS of, FPS of this screen. Uh, the quality, the colors are decently true. Um, I've enjoyed it. The build quality, buttons all work great. Um, the nice part about this is too, with the steering wheel controls, all I have to do if I wanna set those up, I go over here. Um, where is it? Let me see, there we go, steering wheel set up. All I do is I hold down a button on my steering wheel and I tap this button and I can pre-program everything. The quality of that has been quite simple. Um, so audio quality, guys, I give it probably at least an 8 out of 10. Way better than any previous head units I've used, especially at this price range. I think it's performing at around like a $700, $800 head unit, um, which has been awesome. I will say build quality wise, like the bevel on the edge, I wasn't able to attach the uh, just the filler plate because it was a little bit off kilter. That's the only negative kind of build quality, but it looks fine without it. Keeping in mind, I also have a DIN plate that maybe isn't the best fitting for this. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead now and talk about the functionality. All right, so let's talk functionality because this is where I feel like the Autoto S8 MS really shines. Um, guys, right off the bat, we have so many functions. You have an external mic, you have rear backup cameras you can hook up, front dash cams, all through here. We got DVR cams. You can have a driving recorder, guys. Bluetooth, CarPlay, uh, music. Because this is an Android unit, you can get on the internet with Google. You can have a 4G chip. Allows us to kind of operate as its own standalone system. Really, really, really cool. Guys, within that as well, look at this. We have the Torque app. Very fun. You can set up your vehicle, track some real-time data. Awesome. Within that too, if we go over here, you could even do like a TPMS sensor setup. I don't have mine set up because I don't run TPMS sensors. I'm trying to save weight. Um, and then, <laughs> just kidding. And so what else do we have? Guys, so many functions. Steering wheel controls. You can set it up really easy. Hold the button down on your steering wheel. Pick what you want it to do. Very intuitive, I found. For having this for a week, guys, extremely intuitive. And of course, if you're wondering, how the heck did he get this back together? Guys, just follow the ways that we disassembled it, do the opposite. Um, once again, though, because this is a 4G unit and because it's an Android unit, we can connect to Wi-Fi, which is super cool. So let's say you want to go on YouTube. You're like, oh man, YouTube sounds like a great thing to go on. Oh, looks like we need to hook up to the internet, which isn't bad. So we'll go to settings. Wi-Fi, turn on our Wi-Fi, wait for it to load up here, shouldn't take too long. Looks like we're loading up, oh, turned off, and that's sometimes I have some issues with Wi-Fi, I'm not going to lie to you guys, but looks like we're good now, okay, yep, it's connecting, connected, sweet, awesome, I'm going to go over here, let's go to YouTube, wow, we got all this stuff, wonder what would happen, okay, yep, yeah, your channel, sweet, let's just watch this video. Ads, are you kidding me? We got an ad? Oh man, I hate ads. Look at that. We were watching this clown, absolute clown review attire. Come on now, get this out of here, get this out of here. But guys, that's how easy it is. So there's so many functionalities. It's kind of like a little computer in your truck. Let's stop watching this stuff. But that is how easy it is. And if you want to go on CarPlay, CarLink, boom. I don't even know where my phone is. It's here somewhere. It's hard to show off CarPlay if you don't actually have your phone. Now that I have my phone on me, guys, all we have to do is to go down CarPlay, CarLink, boom, you got your phone interface. You can obviously add apps. Still just as smooth. Works great. I can play music. I can go on GPS. All that fun stuff that CarPlay offers. So pretty darn cool. Obviously messages, maps, all that stuff. Um, pretty, pretty fun. So anyways, guys, that is the functionality. I would give this, honestly, a very high functionality rating just because the sheer amount of stuff you can do. Almost too much for your own good, but I'd rather have too much than too little. And so, of course, you have all your tabs here. Blah, 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 blah. Also, phone calls work great. No issues at all. And so let's wrap this all up and talk about if it's worth it. 
Guys, if I am in the market for, an, uh, for a head unit, this is probably what I'm asking myself. I need something that's going to increase my sound quality. Yes, true. I probably want CarPlay or Android Auto. At this point in your life, you want it. As someone who used to have wired CarPlay, I realized really quickly Apple cords are required to get a good connection, and they're expensive, and they break every few months. Wireless is a no-brainer. Guys, the Atoto, you are getting wireless CarPlay, a great audio system. <sighs> Jeez, you're getting so many more features, too. For the same price as most companies would sell a wired CarPlay or even just a Bluetooth head unit. For the price that Atoto has released these units for, and for the quality that I've seen within the past week here of testing, this seems to me to be a no-brainer when it comes to a head unit. I'm going to be putting these in my other 4Runner, and probably in other vehicles that people inquire about getting a head unit, because you're getting so much more value for the money, as opposed to like a big box, a big company, kind of that sells these things, wired car play for only 400 bucks, guys. I'm telling you honestly, I genuinely think this is a pretty sweet unit. It took a little bit to figure out the menus and everything and get all my settings dialed in, but once I did, I have been thoroughly impressed. Now, of course, I'm going to do another update in probably about like six months or so, but guys, from what I've seen, high quality, it's been reliable. The company has been fantastic to work with, really great customer service. Anytime I had a question about installation, connectivity type stuff, they sent me a thorough reply very quickly, and they've been super kind, which I actually appreciate in a company. We're all humans at the end of the day. I want to be treated like one. And so when it comes to it, the pros of this unit, wireless CarPlay, fantastic audio. You have a ton of features such as dash cams, such as rear view cameras, all the hookups for USBs, for external recorders, for um, just wireless microphones for talking on the phone. Fantastic. The color's good. The screen responsiveness is fantastic. The cons? I would say the only con I can think of right now is just because I haven't tested out too long is the longevity of this unit. I have no doubt that it's going to be good. Um, but with that being said, I don't know what the long-term outcome is. And so for all intents and purposes right now, it's been fantastic. Will I update you guys in a few months? Absolutely. And so that is kind of what I would say for this unit. Not many cons, guys. As of right now, it has outperformed all my other head units, especially around this price point, and those that are $200, $300 more. And so that is going to be the video, guys. Everything kind of like parts-wise and description-wise is going to be in the video description below. Feel free to comment if you have any questions about anything, installation, products, blah, 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 blah. I'll do my best to answer it. But that is going to be it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a good night.